Nope. Your daddy. The timing just seems perfect. 14 years old, asking more questions about his dad, and then this camp comes along. It just couldn't have been better timing, so I think it's going to help. It's going to be fun. We have a camp for kids of fallen service members. So we've got 62 kids from Hi, all over the country coming in today. I'm Neil. How are you? Good. Good to see you. I do that a lot. He does that a lot. <laughs> As a mother losing a military person, you are bombarded with emails and different things. So every time I get an email, I just ask, hey, what do you think about this? You want to do this? Right away he said, yeah, I'd love to do this. So I was kind of shocked because it's a long time away for me. We've never been away from each other. I've heard that there's like a dance party, a, a pool party, there's archery, there's like horse, pony riding too. <laughs> He's ready to go. There's my campers. We got 10 of them here. Hi. Hi. Who are you? Hi, Lily, and you're Chloe? Mm -hmm. Hi, how are you guys? I guessed right. Emily. Emily and Victoria, Victoria mm -hmm. the Clark girls from Seattle. Tanner, Tanner's a ham. You always hear about support for the parents, and you don't really hear about support for the, the kids. Hi, guys. So they're kind of left alone, you know, not knowing how to react and what to do. Have you girls ever flown alone before? That you have not? Were you scared? Two months ago, he says, you know, Mom, he says, nobody understands. You know, nobody gets it at school. Hopefully this camp will be able to make him feel connected. I was worried before about uh, finding new friends, but I think I could probably do that. So my hope was that Dylan would get to talk about what it's been like for him, because he was so young when it happened, and I was in my own grief. I was um, feeling guilty, actually, that I did not have a way for my kid to grieve. I think the majority of Americans believe, you know, what I do. Those in the armed services have made sacrifices for this country far beyond what civilians are even thinking about. So we owe them, and we always will. I also believe that if we were talking to a warfighter during their last minutes on this earth, they wouldn't be asking for a thank you. They would be asking us for a favor. They would say, take care of my spouse, take care of my children. So I think one of the main reasons for this camp is to answer that request by providing a camp that can make a long-term difference in the lives of others. Are these brothers? No? You just met, did you guys know each other before? No. What's your name? Larson. Larson, I'm Ben. Gonna be your counselor. Brian. Hi, I'm Ben. Hey, Bye. Bye, nice to meet you. Bye, Bye. Mom. Bye. I love you. <laughs> All right, have fun. Okay. okay. <laughs> Oh, I have a hard time letting go. Here we go. Who's ready to play capture the flag? There you go. This game over already. <laughs> I'm a firm believer in camping as a way to help any child. I went to summer camp. You know, I had a normal suburban two-parent household, happy life. The camp made a difference for me. So I just have a deep belief that for kids that have faced hardship, grieving, kids in need of a friend, the camp can make a tremendous difference.
A milkshake. A milkshake. A sticky, sticky waffle. A sticky, sticky waffle. A mozzarella pizza. A mozzarella pizza. All, all the eggs, eggs, all the eggs, eggs are broken. All the eggs, eggs all the eggs, eggs are broken. broken. Hi everyone, my name is Katie and this is Alyssa. Um, we are here with Kyle's Corner. Kyle's Corner is a small little nonprofit in Milwaukee, Wisconsin that works with children and teens who have lost a loved one. Um, if there is a point throughout the week where you're upset or you really, really miss your loved one or just want to talk about your loved one, um, we will hold discussions and we'll either go outside when it's nice out or we'll be downstairs. Anyone see the big moon last night? Mm -hmm. Do you guys want to do a chatter rock this morning? Yeah. Sure. Okay, I want you guys to pick three rocks. All um, the first one to represent your past, the second one to represent right now, and another one to represent your future. Does anybody want to go first? I'll go. For my past, I cho chose a teardrop because it was really hard when my dad died. Um, mine is like the. Um, almost like a compass, and then mine is because I don't know, really, which way I'm gonna go. I chose the three-leaf clover because with my dad, we used to look for clovers. Like, we'd like lay on the ground and like army crawl and look for clover patches. Mm -hmm. And I chose the singing note because I love to sing. And I chose the exclamation point because of the future, I wanna be awesome. Yeah! Nice! Yeah. I think I got something! That's my goal. So, today what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to build shelters. You want to find two sturdy trees. And on this side, you're going to want to have a trucker's hitch knot. You want to do it? Go for it. Like that? What you want to do is okay. hold the two holes and put them side by side. In 2001, my father committed suicide. I was nine at that time. Um, it, I took it pretty hard. Kyle's Corner actually helped me come to terms with the loss of my father and start opening up to others and eventually interning there to actually help others. Yep, there you go. I have cried a few times in school and I've been called names a couple of times too. Most of the kids in my school, they don't know what I've been through. Here at this camp, you can just, you can feel anything and no one will make fun of you. They won't call you names, they won't laugh at you if you're crying. There's no like bullying and stuff. And it's, we're all friendly here. 300. Corner. We have discussions, but along with discussions, we have arts and crafts and activities. So tonight, we are going to make little quilt squares. And once everybody makes their quilt square, we are going to make a giant Hometown Heroes quilt. Throughout the week, I had a couple of kids come up to me and tell me their stories and open up a little bit more and more each day. And they would tell me, I don't get to talk about this at home. They hold it all inside because nobody understands them. So I think this is like their safe place. Just seeing them all kind of reflect, even if they wouldn't speak, you could just see their minds going. It makes me reflect on things that I think are bad when they're really not compared to 100% of the things that these kids have been through. I'm not a very good heart drawer though, is that okay? Okay. My brother Jake died and I went um, at fishing a lot. There's a marine symbol and a flag and 
It stands for Jimmy John's. It's a restaurant. We went there a couple days before he left. All right, let's give him a hand. This is a picture of my Uncle Will. When I needed to play dolls, he would like play dolls with me. And that's what I was going to I like a soccer ball because me and my dad used to play soccer together before he died. Anyone else? My dad died at a checkpoint. I like football and dancing and fishing. Well, I think we're all affected by war. Everyone knows someone that sacrificed for themselves, for our freedom. And many of us know someone that paid the ultimate price. Sadly, there's, there's thousands of kids who lost a parent in the armed services, and there's a greater need now than ever before to reach out and provide a helping hand and show some compassion, I think. People from all over the United States wanted to send their love and their appreciation for your sacrifice. They wanted all of the kids that came home from here to know, to know how much they care about you. Would you like to meet an NFL player? Let's yeah. do it! First, I'll say I've been a lot of places, and that's the first time I've ever been greeted like that. So that's a pretty cool uh, standing ovation that you guys do. I appreciate it. Um, a little bit about myself. I grew up here in Wisconsin, and now I play down for the Houston Texans. And one of the first things that I want to do um, is say thank you to you guys. Whether it was your dad, whether it was your uncle, whether it was your brother, they were true heroes. And every single sack I get, my celebration is to salute. And that's in honor of our military, and that's in honor of the men and women who support us. And so every time you see, if you ever happen to catch a Texans game, nice, very nice. So if you see me saluting after a sack, which is hopefully uh, very often this season, uh, just know that I'm thinking of you and I'm thinking of uh, the sacrifices that your fathers and brothers and uncles made and, and how much I truly, truly appreciate that. Now a little bit to you guys. I know this is a camp. I know you guys are having a lot of fun. And one of the messages I always try and get across the kids, no matter what it may be, is dream big, work hard. Believe in yourself, and when you look in the mirror every single day, know that you did everything you could to make your dreams come true. That's it, my friend Chelsea Mel. So cool. And uh, look what she brought, guys. Yeah, I see some jaws dropped here. What do you guys think that is? Silver so so Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just really excited to be here. I really want to thank all of you guys, your families, your parents, brothers, sisters, for your sacrifice for this country. And I wouldn't have been able to do what I do and represent this country without all of that. So thank you. And again, I'm really excited and hope, to, hope you guys are excited to learn to do a little bit of gymnastics here. <laughs> I think what we accomplish is different for every child. Some, it was just a fun week. And for some of the kids, there was much more of a profound transformation. It really you know, was a breakthrough camp for them in, in, in helping them heal long term. One discussion just triggered something in everyone. It was a beautiful moment. It was that point where the girls they had a couple of days with each other, a couple of discussions with each other, a couple of activities with each other. So they were starting to feel more comfortable with each other. And they just needed that time to cry and express what they've gone through. And that's probably the greatest thing that I saw out of this week. I think it was all really important that the older kids like us got time together because most of us are the only ones that can remember out of our siblings what it was like when the loss happened. 
Just like the way that they set it up and how we were all in cabins together and the activities they had us do, like team building was awesome. Everybody ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Go! I'm not myself at school or home or anything. And while I was here, I met the other girls and I went to Cal's Corner and everything. And everyone taught me to be myself with my grief. So I opened myself up with this camp and like, it showed me that it's okay to cry when you're standing in the middle of a hallway or it's okay to talk to people and just like be the goofy self that you are. When I first came here, I was going through a lot of problems. And we did the talent show and we did choir and I was able to sing and be myself and actually like have a voice. All right, Camp Homecoming Heroes, this is a special moment. It's a culmination of a week's worth of rehearsals with an American Idol star and a national recording artist because we're about to sing one of her songs. It's called Beautifully Made and we're the Beautifully Made Choir because Naima is such a believer that we're all beautifully made. And so we have the three right here. so self-conscious and when I got here I just gained so much confidence in myself because of just how everybody was and how I got treated and I think I'm just gonna take the confidence back home with me. All right so this is where we do a little bit of audience participation. I want you to own your beauty. It's simple. You say Okay, so today we're gonna put the pot inside the bag and then break your pots. We're talking about all those different feelings and emotions that you felt after you're grieving. Each piece can represent a different experience or way that you felt. And then, just like a puzzle, you're gonna put it back together. A lot of the children are hurting and they just want the safe place where they can feel welcomed and their tears are welcomed and they're allowed to express their grief and their anger. Mine's just gonna be like, holy. Coming to this camp and seeing all these children makes me feel, feel good, but yet uh, a little nervous because uh, I never saw this part of the, of the war. I always saw the, the other side of the war, but this camp is 
fantastic for the kids. It's, it's probably a little therapy for myself, but I find these kids to be extremely, thank you, yes sir, no sir. They're bonding together, they're having a good time, and I think I'd like to see this every week. Raise your hand if you want to answer, but what was that like to put all the pieces back together? None of the pieces fit together. Look, it's lopsided. Mm-hmm. <laughs> were, you, were you still able to put it, to put it back together, though? I just gave up and kind of threw some pieces away. I was just like, uh -huh. Okay, so you take some, you lose some. Mm -hmm. What do you notice about other people? Oh, everyone's missing, like, at least one piece. <laughs> it's really broken. Was that your idea from the start? No. None of it, like, connected, so I was like, I'll just come make a dinosaur then. <laughs> mm -hmm. You worked with what you had, and you turned it into something pretty cool. All right, you guys, for this reflection, but what I want you to do on the sheet of paper is write down your biggest fear. I'll give you a moment to write it down and think about it. Mine is to not reach my full potential in every aspect. I will be a disappointment to my mother or to lose her or to be separated from her. Because she's always been there for me when I needed her. And I love her. To lose another family member. So I want everyone to come up around the fire with their sheets of paper. And I want you guys to take the biggest fear you have in this world and throw it in the fire. Get rid of your fear from your life. I want you to let go of that burden and let go of that pain. Is there anything you would like to share tonight? Every day, I usually pour out the happiness into my days, and then I let the anger, hate, and all that other stuff overflow, and then I just lose myself. Uh, you can't do that. I lost it. I bottled everything up. I used to cut myself, I used to drink and smoke, and then I went away and I realized it's not the right way to do it. I need to talk about it, let it out, talk to people that understand what I'm going through. I've realized I like to use my fear, my fears, and my bad past everything that's gone wrong as my drive to be better in life. Since I don't remember a lot of my dad, I don't know how much I told him I loved him. I'm not sure if he's the one that taught me how to read, how to tie my shoes. I don't remember any of that stuff about him. You can never forget. What I'm never going to forget is through you. If you're going to go the wrong road, which I did too, drugs, alcohol, it doesn't do any good. Zero. It doesn't. Running away, cutting yourself, being a jerk, it don't help. It'll, it'll feel a little better as it goes along. It's never going to be gone. In my experience, that's gone. It's going to be going. It's always there. I've learned it helps to just let it out and talk to people about your problems, no matter how big or how small. Now twist round and put the right leg. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Okay, can you help me? Use the log on your left. Oh, Austin's stuck. Austin, climb a little bit more and grab the rope yeah. right above your head. Take your right arm and grab the platform. Put your right foot on the ropes. I can't. I love being a leader and helping others out. I just want to get the most out of life in general because you're never promised another day on earth. And if one 15-year-old starts to do things, others start following. Oh! Oh my gosh! Your right foot in between the uh, two poles where the rope is. It's cool to know that other people understand how it feels. There's other kids, every other kid has lost somebody that they love in their family. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh Put your my right gosh. foot on the ropes. Right foot on the ropes. Yeah! There you go. Good. Those hands are You're like halfway there, Taylor. <laughs> 
not Kaylee. Fly fell down, down, down to this dark and lonely hole. There was no one left come about me anymore. And I needed a way to climb and grab a hold of the edge. You were sitting there holding a rope. We go, we'll go up, up, up. The reason we've all been together this week is actually a sad one. Each of you have lost a family member who served in the U.S. military. Some of you drove 20 minutes to get here, and some of you traveled 12 hours. Many of you were nervous, I'm sure, as you had never been away from your home before, or you were anxious as you were traveling alone and did not know who would be meeting you and what you would be doing at camp. The common bond that you share may be a sad one, but I hope that Camp Hometown Heroes has been a place of happiness for each of you. In your times of sadness, please remember each of us and know that we're always with you. This is a poem called We Remember Them, and we'd like you to join in with us. At the rising of the sun and at its going down, we remember them. As long as we live, they too will live, for they are now a part of us. We remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. I think being out away from our parents, I think it was all really important. And the way that they honored us last night was unbelievable. I think that, might have, that was probably the best part. At the beginning, I hated myself for it. I was like, don't cry, Dylan. No, it's bad. Then I was like, it's OK to cry. There are pe people here that understand your pain. I would have let him go. Crying last night was really absolutely difficult and seemed impossible, but all of us, all the campers here, were equally touched by it.
It was awesome. It was really sad, but really absolutely incredible at the same time. I'm going to take you know, mostly smiles back, and I'm going to try to remember the sadness I felt, though. I'm going home today with a lot more connections than I thought I would. It's the best support I've gotten since my dad has passed, other than my mom. I hope that the parents and the kids understand that there's all kinds of people in this world, not just those that are affiliated with hometown heroes, but that really care for them and want to reach out and do something positive for them. We love them, you know, and we don't even know them. I think it's time we showed them. I think he took a lot from this. A lot, comfort is what he's got. Peace, I think. And he knows that he's not alone. Yeah. I think friendships. Hi. I'm, I'm watching him. Uh, with phone numbers and talking about kids. And when I walked up to see him, the, he, of course he didn't want to hug me, but he was smiling, he was having a good time. Hey. Oh, what a good son. So I was really hoping he would find kids like himself and be able to talk about whatever it is he's been feeling. And I'm just really grateful because it's great to provide them with fun things to do, but they have their own grief that needs to be dealt with. Otherwise, I feel like, what would happen to them? This camp was different. This one had people that actually understood what it's like to lose somebody and almost not remember a single thing. I built relationships that I know will last forever. What was it gonna be like next year? How it feels, I know where I've been on a lonely path in need of friends, but nobody knows the tears that I've cried. Gonna jump this train that's on these tracks. I'm coming out from the other side. I might fall, but I'll get back up. I might fall, but I'll get back up again. On the road, but baby, I'm a contender. I might fall, but I'll get back up. I might fall, but I'll get back up again. You no, know I'm not losing hope, cause baby, I'm a contender. I might fall, but I'll get back up. I might fall, but I'll get back up again. Yeah. No, I'm not losing hope. Baby, I'm a contender